The narrow P-51 fuselage meant that the Mustang's cockpit was small for a U.S. fighter of World War II. Compared to British and German fighters, however, the cockpit was generously spacious, while seat and pedal adjustments could accommodate pilots of various sizes. Earlier Mustangs utilized either a birdcage canopy or the RAF's Malcolm Hood. The D model saw the introduction of the clear bubble or teardrop-shaped canopy made of plexiglass. This canopy provided the pilot with an excellent unobstructed 360 degree view. Altogether, visibility in the Mustang was rated among the best of any U.S. fighter in the war. In early model P-51s, the thin wings forced ground crews to mount the airplane's four Browning 50 caliber machine guns on their side at oblique angles. This unusual positioning often resulted in jammed guns when maneuvering at high G's. The problem was solved in the D model by thickening the wings, allowing the guns to be mounted upright. At the same time, the Mustang's standard armament was increased from four to six machine guns. In addition to the guns, ten five-inch rockets could be fitted onto zero-length launchers under the wings. Alternately, each wing could be loaded with a 500 or 1,000 pound bomb. Despite a superb low drag airframe and revolutionary laminar flow wings, the original Allison powered Mustang was too slow to compete with German single seat fighters especially at altitudes over 12,000 feet. British test pilots suggested that the Allison be replaced by the same Rolls-Royce Merlin engine powering RAF Spitfires and Hurricanes. This liquid-cooled 12-cylinder inline engine had a two-stage supercharger that provided the necessary power for high-altitude combat. Several Merlin-powered Mustangs were tested, and the results were favorable. The P-51D you see here was powered by a 1,590 horsepower American-built Packard Merlin engine. Hard-hitting and very tough, the mighty Mustang was a pilot's dream. Often called the best fighter of the war, the P-51 proved itself an extremely powerful weapon. In the early days of the war, the British had come to the North American Aviation Company and asked that they develop a new fighter that the RAF could use to combat the Luftwaffe. It took the engineers at North American only 102 days to build a prototype. The first production models were delivered to the Royal Air Force in the fall of 1941. The British named it the Mustang, and by May 1942, the new fighters were proving themselves in combat. Originally, the P-51 had a very capable 1,200 horsepower Allison engine. But in 1942, the British fitted the plane with the 1,380 horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin engine and turned the P-51 into the fastest plane in the sky with a top speed of 437 miles per hour. North American Aviation then fitted the Merlin engine in new Mustangs it was building for the U.S. Army Air Force. 
Soon, thousands of the hot little fighters were in combat in every theater of the war. The P-51D was the definitive version of the Mustang. A new bubble canopy increased the pilot's visibility. Additional fuel tanks gave the plane unprecedented range. And six 50 caliber wing-mounted machine guns gave it a very powerful punch. The extra fuel tanks gave the P-51 the ability to escort heavy bombers all the way to their targets deep inside enemy territory. The bomber crews called the fighters their little friends. Rightly so, for without the protection of the Mustang, too many bombers would have been shot down and daylight bombing would have failed. No wonder Air Force General Hap Arnold called the P-51 Mustang one of the great miracles of the war. The big features that uh, the P-51 had was its long range. I mean, it could go anywhere that the heavy bombers could go and come back, stay with them, and, and bring them home. The other features that um, made the P-51 so special was its uh, high maneuverability and high performance. It was very fast um, on the deck, on the ground, or at high altitude due to the uh, two-stage, two-speed supercharger. I always felt that I could outmaneuver any German airplane with the P-51. One of the disadvantages of the P-51 was a liquid-cooled engine that had to have a radiator to keep the engine cool. And, of course, if you got a hole in your radiator system and you lost your coolant, uh, that was, that'd be pretty devastating. What characteristics make a a good fighter pilot. Training probably, you know, the guy with the most experience generally is going to be the best pilot. So experience level was very important. Uh, knowing your airplane, knowing your tactics, knowing the enemy, knowing his tactics and capabilities was important. Eyesight was important in World War II because, you know, we didn't have radar and, uh, and things like this. You had to see them, you know, it was all visual. If you see somebody before he sees you, you can get yourself into a, a position of advantage to um, attack. And maybe there's a little motivation there, too, you know, you do you want to see them. <laughs>
right flight. Proceeding to Waypoint Abel, 12 o'clock, 7 miles.
single fighter. He's at your 10 o'clock high. Distance 700 yards.
100 yards. Bandit, enemy fighter. He's directly ahead. 12 o'clock, 400 yards. Just wonder where that came from. Green's charm. I'm out of ammo. Bandit, single fighter. He's at your 7 o'clock high. Range, 4 miles. Bandit, single fighter. The target's at your 11 o'clock high. 1,000 yards away. Bandit, enemy fighter. The target's at your 11 o'clock high. Range, 1,000 yards. Enemy fighter. He's to your left. Nine o'clock. Range is five miles. Bandit. Enemy fighter. He's to your left. Nine o'clock high. Distance, 700 yards.
to Waypoint Dog, 2 o'clock. Approach from the west. Roger.